no matter how good you think your theology is, no matter how biblical you think your theology is, the Word of God reigns supreme over them. Can you take us, Maximus, down this road of bibliolatry? That, that's, a, that's a word that will get thrown around in certain camps and tribes. Uh, they'll hear what you just said about biblicism, and where canons or creeds and confessions fit, and they'll say no. And 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 the, and the counterpoint will be, well, you're just a Bible worshiper. You're engaged in bibliolatry. Uh, I've heard the phrase "paper pope" thrown around. Uh, this is your uh, authority in that that negative sense. Um, without getting you too riled up or too irked, how would you respond to that? What how, what do you say to those who say biblicists are engaged in bibliolatry? Well, that started with evangelical critical scholars. I saw that years ago, and that was greatly disturbing to me. First of all, it says in Scripture that God has exalted his word above his name. There is no way that you can turn the word of God into an idol. You can turn a creed into an idol. You can turn a theology into an idol. But if God has exalted his word above his name and Jesus is the word, uh, that's illogical what they say. And so what is happening is there's a deprecation of the authority of God's word in that. The only authority that a preacher has is the word. Preach the word. For the time will come when they will not endure sound teaching. And that word there in Timothy is healthful. The word sound means healthful. You know, I have to be careful what I eat because some of the things that I like, are not help, helpful. And so Paul used that with doctrine. But what he meant was it's centered solely on the word of God. And if you start adding ingredients, <laughs> it just does it like it does us. You ever read the ingredients on so many things? Um, uh, and there's many things in the ingredients of food that are not good for us. And so there is the analogy. You cannot now, you could do this to a translation. I love the New King James and the King James. I don't, you know, it's the word of God, even though it's thou and thee. But there are people that do turn a translation into an idol where that's the only one they'll read or that's the only one that they think is the word of God. Well, the word of God is based in the autographs in the original language. And so, therefore, it's not in a translation. So, there are some errors, but that's not the word of God. The translation is not. It is an attempt to render. But you cannot take God's precious word and turn it into an idol. That sounds to me like some of these historical critical scholars, these evangelical critical scholars, want to be an authority in themselves. The only authority you have, gentlemen is the word. Agreed. Pastor Farnell, one question to close this just briefly. Should all Christians be biblicists and why? The answer is affirmative yes. And I'm telling the guys, take your theology and your creeds and subject them to the word of God. When they come to the word of God, they have to ask themselves, what glasses am I wearing this morning that would inhibit the spirit of the living God, the spirit of truth from teaching me. They got to be sensitive. Here is what technically I will use in class. You got to be sensitive to your presuppositions. That includes me. But all of these things, no matter how good you think your theology is, no matter how biblical you think your theology is, the word of God reigns supreme over them. And you have to be willing to re-examine all of them, and be sensitive to the fact, you know, that's what I was taught about this passage. But Lord, am I understanding this because I am responsible to you as I teach people what your word really says. To be a preacher is a very dangerous occupation because you are being accounted faithful to Jesus and to the word of God, not to a theological system. As much as I appreciate the Reformation, a prayerful, when you come to a passage, Lord, don't let me ever 
suppress what your word teaches by adding on these rose-colored glasses. Help me to be true and faithful to your word. That is very difficult. I'm going to tell you it's easy to say. It's very difficult, but you have to do it so that you preach the word of God. Because when the word of God in its purity is preached, that's when the Holy Spirit is sharp and active. And uh, there's tremendous growth by doing that.